A former WWE star has received an offer to join the NFL. WWE is set to extend a lucrative deal. And what was the major announcement on AEW Dynamite? But before we get into it, be sure to subscribe with notifications turned on and drop a like on the video for more pro wrestling news as we head towards 50,000 subscribers. And let's begin then by taking a look at why a fan was removed from the building at last night's AEW Dynamite. Last night, all Elite Wrestling would head to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada for the latest episode of AEW Dynamite, where several incidents led to a fan being removed from the building, with one AEW wrestler even calling them out on camera. The first sign of trouble came when Soraya pointed to two fans on the front row during the match between Mariah May and Harley Cameron, with Soraya asking for the camera to show two fans on the front row, and this is what she said. Get the camera on these pervs over here. These two right here are creeps. Watch out women, they will attack you. This would soon be followed by a tweet from artist Mel Coleman, who was in attendance at the show, where they're bringing awareness to what appears to be the same individuals, and she would note, you know what's not cool? Behaving like a disgusting, misogynistic pig spewing gross things at female wrestlers and in front of your little son. Do better. It appears that this behaviour would continue throughout the night as Reddit user Wintertime13 shared a similar incident that took place during the Ring of Honor tapings that followed AEW Dynamite, with the person in question ultimately being removed by security. The post titled Watched an Awful Thing Happen involving Sky Blue tonight at the ROH taping and it reads... A man in the front row continued to make vulgar comments about Sky, commenting on her body, calling her baby girl, the whole shebang, the whole match. Wouldn't stop when people around him told him to shut the f up, he just got louder. Aubrey Edwards finishes refing the match and screams for him to be kicked out to security. Both AEW security and arena security were involved. More people were called when he put up a fight. He had a child with him. Sky left the ring quickly and was very upset. Really awful thing to observe in 2024. It seems that the arena and AEW security resolved the issue in the end, although you would expect this action to have happened sooner, considering Soraya had to call the people in question out on the Dynamite broadcast much earlier in the night. In any case, the fans were removed from the building, and it'd be interesting to see if there's any follow-ups such as arena bans. WWE creative are fearful ahead of a major debut. Former MLW World Heavyweight Champion Jacob Fatu is reportedly under contract with WWE and is expected to join the Bloodline saga in the coming weeks and months, somebody who is often touted as the best wrestler in the Anawahi family. The agile powerhouse is known for his unique in-ring style that will no doubt make him a standout once he hits the WWE roster, and it seems that there's concern that he might just be a little too good. According to a report from WrestleVotes, there's a worry in the WWE creative team that Fatu could outshine self-imposed bloodline leader Solo Sokoa upon his arrival, and they would note. Interesting tidbit here, sources suggest that Solo Sokoa's recent aggressive streak is part of a strategy to establish him as THE main force within this new phase of the bloodline, ahead of Jacob Fatu's debut. However, some trepidation remains within creative over fear that Fatu's presence could outshine Solo at this stage. It's worth remembering that Jacob Fatu is a 12-year veteran of the business, despite only just being picked up by a major promotion, whilst his cousin Solo Sokoa has wrestled for half of that time, and only really three years full-time, so I wouldn't really see the apparent concern as too much of a knock on the enforcer. Also remember that Fatu isn't only now signing for WWE because he wasn't good enough before, as this is far from the case, as there's rumours that WWE have opted against recruiting him many times in the past due to previous legal troubles. In any case, WWE clearly think highly of the big man ahead of his upcoming debut, which can only be a good thing for him. How it will affect the rest of the bloodline remains to be seen. Next up, how close did this former WWE champion come to joining AEW in 2019? Adam Copeland would make his AEW debut last October at the Wrestle Dream pay-per-view, this after his WWE contract came to an end the month prior. At the beginning of All Elite Wrestling in 2019, it was reported that the former Edge was close to joining the then startup AEW, with those talks ultimately leading to WWE talking him into coming out of retirement with them instead. 
good. Speaking with Chris Van Vliet on the Insight podcast this week, Adam would confirm that he was really close to joining AEW in its debut year, although he would choose to return to WWE instead, and he would say, how close were you to signing with AEW instead of making that return at the Royal Rumble in 2020? Really close. You know, we, we had great discussions. So when I first started talking to AEW, I wasn't yet cleared. I'd, I'd made it, we, we'd talk about it like the bosses of, of each video game level, yeah. you know. Um, but I still wasn't cleared by company doctors. Once all of those clearances started to come, I was like, oh, this is, this is real now, okay. So before I did anything, I had to go kind of get the final clearance um, needed for either company. But I had negotiated with, with everybody. I was like, okay, here's where I'm at. Here's what I, I've been told I can do and, and started the, the, the process. Copeland would then add that he's happy with his decision and with how things worked out, revealing why he made the choice he did back in 2019. And he would add. So then in going to WWE and and sitting down with Vince, he goes, well, it's got to happen here. At that stage, I looked at the equity built and, you know, it felt like having to start over was, especially having to start over af after having been gone for nine years, felt really daunting, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, it felt like at least with WWE, that's one thing off the table that I don't have to worry about. I can come back and walk into the history of this character. And, and I do feel like it, it needed to happen there initially. I really do, you know, if, if only for that Royal Rumble moment. Next up, a former WWE star has received an offer to join the NFL. Gable Steveson would find himself on the latest list of WWE roster cuts earlier this month. This reportedly due to a lack of progress and development between the ropes since joining the promotion in September 2021. Prior to his time in WWE, Gable was and still is considered one of, if not the best amateur wrestlers in United States history, having picked up an Olympic gold medal in Tokyo 2021. With WWE having to outbid the UFC during negotiations. It seems that this athletic pedigree will continue to pay off for Stevenson, providing him with yet another opportunity to get involved in a brand new sport. According to Ariel Helwani of the MMA Hour, NFL teams have reached out to Stevenson over a potential move to the gridiron, adding that he's also undergoing MMA training, and Ariel would note, I can tell you via Dave Martin, Gable Stevenson's manager, that multiple NFL teams have reached out to Gable Stevenson. He does have that extra year of eligibility in the NCAA, and he's also been training at Kill Cliff FC MMA gym with Henry Hooft and Robbie Lawler. Ariel would add that two NFL teams have offered Gable a spot on a mini camp. While Stevenson missed out on the chance to join this year's United States Olympic wrestling team due to the timing of his release, he appears to have options aplenty when it comes to his next career move. With Gable continuing to train in MMA, it'll be interesting to see if he joins back up with the TKO group, this time under the UFC umbrella, or if he'll opt to sign for growing rival promotions such as PFL or One Championship, who typically offer more lucrative deals whilst lacking the long-term prestige that the UFC provides. In any case, his career in professional wrestling appears to be over, at least for the time being. And next, WWE is set to extend a lucrative deal. WrestleMania 41 is heading to Las Vegas, Nevada in 2025, with Sin City recently being confirmed as the show's next host. With that said, we could be set to see the first international WrestleMania as part of an upcoming enhancement to the deal between WWE and Saudi Arabia. Turkey al Sheikh, chairman of Saudi Arabia's General Entertainment Authority, would speak with ESPN this week to hear at an upcoming announcement regarding WWE's partnership with the Middle Eastern Kingdom. In the interview, al Sheikh revealed Saudi Arabia's ambitions to potentially host either the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania as part of this upcoming enhancement. This is Saudi continues to spend big to bring major events to their nation. al Sheikh's revelations came amid the unveiling of a strategic agreement between Riyadh season and the UFC, who also under the TKO group banner, which signals a significant step 
Web in the collaboration between TKO and Saudi. Since sealing a decade-long deal with the Saudi General Sports Authority in 2018, WWE has been a regular presence in Saudi Arabia, staging high-profile events there. Initially, the agreement guaranteed one annual event per year, but it was subsequently expanded to accommodate two. Whilst we await to see if WrestleMania or Royal Rumble will head to Saudi Arabia in the years ahead, something we know they have the money for, WWE's next pay-per-view will go down in Jeddah on May 25th when the King and Queen of the Ring returns to the country. But what do you make of WrestleMania or Royal Rumble potentially heading to Saudi Arabia in the near future? Let me know in the comments down below. <clears throat> Next up, what was the major announcement on AEW Dynamite? Heading into last night's episode of AEW Dynamite, fans were anticipating a major announcement from temporary general manager Kenny Omega, something that was revealed to be happening before the show went on the air. The cleaner would appear via satellite from a hospital bed where he would reveal that in response to the recent actions of the new elite, who have attacked both Omega and AEW President Tony Khan in recent weeks, Jack Perry, Kazushka Okan, and the Young Bucks will now be competing in an Anarchy in the Arena match at Double or Nothing, this on May 26th, against FTR and two mystery opponents. Later in the night, the Elite would cut a promo in the ring where they would find out who the two spots would be filled by, with Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler being joined by Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson on the ramp before marching to the ring where a brawl would break out. The Anarchy in the Arena match is the fifth match to be confirmed for Double or Nothing so far, joining the AEW World title match between Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage, the international title match that sees Roderick Strong defend against Will Ospreay, the women's world title match that pits Tony Storm against Serena Deeb, and the TBS title match where Mercedes Monet challenges Willow Nightingale in her AEW in-ring debut. 